of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices of the Commission on Appointments in the third regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. The Secretary of the Commission is directed to call the roll. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. The officers and members of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions of the Commission on Appointments as our are as follows. Yeah, no. The Honorable Chairperson, the Honorable Cynthia Villar is present. The other officers and members of this committee are. Ferrer the Fourth, Alvarez Jr. Arbison, Cagas, Chepeco Jr., De La Rosa, Present, Go, Present, Yan, tama naman na dyan. Marinig ba ako dyan? May volume ba ako? Present po. Present, Thank you, Senator Go. Laxon, Present. Noel. Pangilinan. Present. Pimentel the third. Po. Present. Ramirez Sato. Present. Present. Thank you, ma'am. Recto. Revilla Jr. Present. Subiri. Zamora. Present. Almario. Villanueva. Pancho. Present. Drilon. Present. Present. Thank you, sir. Advincula. Present. Heron. Madam Chair, declaration of a quorum, please. Without many senators. Oh. With 14 members present in, in virtually, uh, including the chair with a total 24 members, the chair declares the existence of a quorum. Under consideration of this committee is the nomination of Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana as Commissioner, Commission on Audit for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, by Jose A. Fabia. May we now hear the Secretary's report on the status of the jurisdictional requirements in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committees and other relevant information about the nominee. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Your Honours. The Commission on Appointments received on January 19, 2022, for its consent, the nomination of Mr. Mario G. Lipana as Commissioner, Commission on Audit, for a term expiring on 2 February 2027, by Jose A. Fabia. Subject nomination was subject nomination was referred by the Chairperson of the Commission, Senate President Vicente C. Soto III to the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Officers for its appropriate action on January 19, 2022, pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. Likewise, the said nomination was broadcast over PTB4 station on January 19, 2022 at 6.37 p.m. 
and published on January 20, 2022 in two newspapers of general circulation, the Manila Times and the Manila Standard, pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the new rules of the Standing Committee. Mr. Lipana has complied with the submission of the mandatory documentary requirements on January 21, 2022, as provided for in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the new rules of the Commission. Your Secretariat received yesterday, 25 January 2022, a letter dated 24 January 2022 from Mr. Lipana, addressed to the chairperson of this committee, Senator Cynthia Villar, requesting that he be allowed to attend online for the consideration of his nomination scheduled today, 26 January 2022, for the reason that he contracted COVID-19 and is required to undergo isolation pursuant to IATF and DOH guidelines. The members of this committee have been provided copies of the said letter request. There is no sworn opposition filed against the nomination of Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana. On behalf of the chair of this committee, we acknowledge the online presence of the chairperson of the Commission on Audit, the Honorable Michael Aguinaldo, and former Commissioner Jose A. Fabia. That is all, Madam Chair, your honors. We'll act, now as, uh, we'll act now as majority floor leader. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, I move that the letter dated January 24, 2022 of Mr. Mario G. Lipana, requesting that he be allowed to appear online before this committee today for reasons as reported by the CA Secretary be approved. I so move, Mr. Chair. The Chair, if there is no objection and hearing none, the motion is approved. Mr. Secretary, please administer the oath to Mr. Mario Lipana. Thank you, Madam Chair. May I request the Commissioner nominee to please stand up in his uh, location online? Okay. Kindly raise your right hand. So Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? So help you, God. Move back one. I do. Yes, sir. Mr. Lepana? I do. Yes, Thank sir. you. Please sit down. Uh, Madam Chair, the nominee is now under oath. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lepana, you may now proceed with your introductory statement. Presiding Chair, Honorable Senator Cynthia A. Villar, and to all the honorable members of this August body. Good morning. I am Mario Gonzalez Lipana, currently the Regional Director of COA Region 4A, Calabar Zone, and in concurrent capacity, the Head of Intelligence and Confidential Fund Audit Office, Office of the Chairman. I am honored this day to appear before the distinguished member of the Commission on Appointment for the opportunity to hum humbly subject myself to the process of confirmation of my nomination as commission, Commissioner of the Commission on Audit. The nomination as Commissioner comes at a very difficult time in our history. In view of all the pressing concern and legislative work that this honorable body, body must also address during the pandemic. But it is my sincere hope that the Commission on Audit can be better equipped to assist and share in your work through the completion of its composition as envisioned by our Constitution. I am aware of the mon monumental task looming on the horizon as we gradually recover from the pandemic. But I am also confident that the future will not be too, be too difficult to chart because all of us are on the same side serving the same nation. 
and this includes the Commission on Audits, which is always been and will continue to be valid. For my part, I hope to contribute effective and innovative solution in keeping with the extraordinary challenges and opportunities brought about by the, by the pandemic and technological changes. Thus, I respectfully present myself before this honorable body. For 38 years without any break, I have served only one institution through this institution. I have been assigned to various government agencies in the legislative, executive, and constitutional bodies. And in the process, I have acquired such extensive experience and expertise that a civil servant who rose steadily from the ranks could ever acquire. You have had the privilege of serving a single institution for a total of four decades, but fewer are still those given the opportunity to say to serve the very same institution from a position where he may now use and share such experience and expertise with fellow commissioner, especially if coming from different field of work. But experience and expertise are not the only qualification. Although I am, am, I am a certified public, public accountant by profession, I also enjoy doing other things that keep me grounded. For instance, I am, I am also a farmer in my hometown in the province of Bulacan. I have inherited farming and its component of palay trading from my father who taught me the Filipino values of hard work, dedication and credibility. Much like any respected businessman, I hold this value dearly and protect them as my most valuable possession. If nothing else, these values are what I am humbly pleased to offer. In these challenging times, there's a call to duty. And with your support, I shall respond to this call and be a vessel to move forward and partner. Heeding result words, spend the whole life of our intellect and all the fervor of our hearts. Thank you. The nominee is now ready to respond to any comment or question from the members. Please raise your hand if you want to Madam Chair. make a comment. Madam I Chair, call on, okay. I call Madam on uh, Senator, uh, Senator Lakson, I think. Thank you, Madam. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask the nominee uh, what he thinks are the uh, biggest challenges facing the COA. Aside from the pandemic, uh, what are those challenges facing the COA as we speak? Uh, Your Honor, uh, al almost always the challenges of the COA is uh, to ensure uh, the accountability for public resources of our government. Please say again, I didn't, uh, I didn't quite uh, get that. Uh, so always challenges, Your Honor, for every, for every, uh, for every member of the Commission of Audit is to ensure the accountability of uh, public resources in the government. However, uh, right now for COA, uh, it is our challenges, but uh, one of the challenges also for COA is uh, the lack of personnel in the Commission of Audit. Thank you. So what are you bringing into the table to uh address those challenges, uh, sir? Well, Your Honor, is uh, upon my assumption, I will uh, continue strengthening uh, the, the, the accountability of public resources, and I will also help uh, the, the present uh, trust of our government 
to hire more uh, CPAs and lawyer to augment our uh, manpower and address all those challenges. Thank you, sir. So, pardon my uh, name, Taino, but uh, I'd like to find out. We noticed that COA has been issuing, you know, the yung notice of disallowance and uh, audit observation memorandum to certain agencies. Ano? Nakikita natin to especially during budget deliberations. No? So my question is, what happens after uh, COA issues the same or those uh, the, the notice and the audit uh, uh, observation memorandum to those agencies? Ano po yung nangyayari? Can, can you walk us through this uh, procedure? Uh, first, Your Honor, uh... Upon the auditor auditing a particular transaction and he uh, noticed some uh, lacking or uh, uh, documents that need to be uh, more explained, the, 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 the deficiency of those transactions, uh, we issue AOM. And uh, if that particular AOM was not properly addressed, addressed by a certain government institution, it result to issue was of notice of disallowance. Then after that, now you have issued after, the notice of disallowance. After issuing a notice of disallowance, uh, the agreed party have 180 days to appeal before the commission. And if that particular uh, notice of disallowance is a uh, uh, upheld by the commission proper, uh, the, the particular agreed party will will uh, uh, go to the Supreme Court for filing of certiorari. All right. All right. What is the role of COA in the uh, prosecution, possible prosecu uh, prosecution of individuals in those agencies that uh, do not comply or are responsible uh, for the uh, 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 for for their failure you know, to submit uh, compliance, uh, we make sure that when the Supreme Court issue a notice to to COA, uh, let's say for example to to comment or 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 uh, uh, for the for the for the appeal of the you know, of the agreed party, the COA will uh, properly address all those. Uh, Memorandum for the Supreme Court to file their, their comment. How? How, sir? How do you address? Uh, we will we will we will uh, address by by filing a comment for, for the for the certiorari or for the motion submitted by the agreed party. Can go uh, be a complain uh, uh, complaining party or a complainant? in the prosecution of uh, individuals in those agencies? For a notice of this allowance issued by the COA, uh, almost always we, we, we submit copy of the notice of this allowance to Ombudsman. And if Ombudsman uh, uh, start the, 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 the prosecution or investigation of the uh, particular transaction, we submit information to the Ombudsman regarding the disallowed transaction. What is the normal, normal or average time frame you know, in all this? You know? Say you uh, issue a notice of disallowance, you know? okay, and then uh, they appeal or they explain to COA. After that, they can go to the Supreme Court. Ano po yung normal or average time frame uh, in all this before uh, the Ombudsman uh, takes action, at least at the level of the Ombudsman. As per your experience, sir. Your Honor, uh, I have no data yet uh, with regards to the number of days we're in the commission of proper, uh, uh, particularly act on a particular uh, appeal filed before the commission proper. And I can assume you're, we're not counting days here, huh? we're counting years. Normally, before, normally. even before the uh, Ombudsman uh, or it reaches the uh, office of the Ombudsman, I guess, I assume it, it will take years. 
So how do you correct that? Ano? Kasi if, if it takes, say, three years, four years, five years, before the ombudsman uh, uh, takes cognizance of a case uh, through uh, COAS uh, uh, administrative uh, act of issuing notice of the disallowance or the audit observation memorandum, so as per your experience, how long does it take before it even reaches the office of the ombudsman? Uh, if I remember right, sir, it's always an average of one to two years. One to two years, Your Honor. Yun palam. So how yes, do you how Honor. do we correct that? Because one to two years uh, for an administrative proceeding to uh, to, uh, to to finish, ano? Medyo matagal po yun. Magkakalimutan na yan. So I'm uh, more particular in, you know, the uh, swift uh, action or a faster action on the part of the COA. Of course, we have to follow just due process. We understand that. Pero ano po yung pwede nyo maikontribute para mapabilis instead of one to two years? Baka pwede gawin nating one to two months following due process, of course. Yes, Your Honor. Maybe when we have already convened the new the new commission proper uh maybe that is maybe that that will be our our uh, objective kung pwede po nating mapabilis at ma-expedite po yung ano alam naman po natin napakarami pong uh, uh aso na pumapag, pumapasok po sa COA kaya nga po siguro ko ba makukumpleto natin yung aming workforce na supposed to be 14,000 at maka-hire po kami ng maraming tao, we will create more teams para to expedite po the action that uh, being uh, brought to us for uh, expediting the resolution of these particular cases. Uh, yung sa notice of disallowance, ano yung backlog ninyo rito? How many cases do you have? Yung nasa inyo pa lang, uh -huh. wala, pa yung, wala pa sa prosecution phase. How how many uh, cases are you uh, do you have now? Wala po akong sorry your honor wala po pa akong data no kung, kung ilan po yung naka submit sa commission proper. Nandiyan po ba kayo sa office ng COA ngayon? Wala po eh. May may <laughs> ano po ako COVID positive po ako. <laughs> hindi ba hindi niyo ba ma-check at least magkaroon kami ng idea dito sa committee or sa commission? Kung ano yung Maybe, uh, ng backlog? Uh, uh, Senator Lacson may I intercede? Yes, Maybe he, he can give you a report uh, later on when he is able to go back to his office. Will that be acceptable? Of course, ma'am. Uh, we can wait. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's, that's all. That's all. Uh, yun lang ang concern ko. Thank you very Thank much, you. Uh, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, Senator Lacson. Uh, are there more? Uh, uh, we recognize Senate, our minority floor leader, Senator Drillon. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Chairperson. Uh, I'd like to raise a few questions on the nominee. First of all, for the record, I have- yeah, been... Senator Drillon, can I intercede? I just want to acknowledge uh, the presence of Congresswoman Noel and Senator Pimentel. That's all. Thank you, Senator Drillon. Thank you, ma'am. Um, for the record, I have known uh, the nominee uh, when I was Senate President as uh, she, he was uh, the uh, COA uh, representative assigned to the Senate. And I do recall our disagreements, which is good. Because if he always agrees with me, then we're in trouble. Uh, but indeed, he was trying to do his job. He would uh, raise issues on certain expenses, which uh, is a it's a valid exercise of his duty to audit uh, government funds. So I only have a very good impressions of the uh, of the nominee, and I have no doubt that once he is elevated to the office of commissioner. He will continue to show the same diligence that he has shown when uh, he was in the Senate. Um, I have a few questions, though, to ask of the uh, of the uh, uh, nominee. 
Uh, first of all, uh, uh, Mr. Nominee, are you familiar with the formally investigation in the Senate? Yes, Your Honor. Have you been following uh, the proceedings uh, that are broadcast uh, of the uh, investigation? Uh, not all, sir, but uh, most of the I follow it. I'm sorry, sir? Not all proceeding, but uh, some of it, I, 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 uh, I see it in the media. I see it in the television. There are, there are voluminous documents. I think it can fill uh, the conference room uh, in the Senate. And uh, uh, your chairman uh, has committed that uh, the COA will submit its report by the end of last year. Up to now, uh, three weeks into the new year, we are not aware and we have not received any such report. Um, it is a very critical investigation and uh, the uh, role of the COA uh, cannot be overemphasized. Uh, they, they are uh, a key to this investigation. Now, I assume you you have not been uh, you have not had an opportunity to act in your official capacity in the audit of uh, the funds uh, which was assigned to PSDBM by the DOH in the amount of forty two billion. In other words, uh, you are not part of the team that examined uh, at least these uh, documents. Yes, Your Honor. You are not, or are you, ma'am? Um, uh, I'm not. I'm not part. I'm not part. You are not. All right. Good. You are not, and uh, therefore, um, um, it is uh, logical to state that uh, it may take you some time after you have assumed office to go over these documents. Uh, would you agree with that, uh, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, uh, considering the fact that the uh, submission of the COA has long been delayed, uh, and uh, there are uh, there are uh, there are still uh, two commissioners. Uh, would you consider inhibiting yourself from uh, the COA investigation uh, in order that it can be expedited, considering that it has already been delayed? No, Your Honor. I'm sorry. No, Your Honor, I will not inhibit myself. You will not inhibit yourself. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Why is that, uh, Mr. Lipana? Uh, I believe that it is the responsibility of the commission and being a commissioner. When I when I finally uh, confirm, it is part of my uh, constitutional duty. All right. So, okay. Um, Okay, uh, uh, certainly I would agree with that, that it is part of a constitutional duty. The only reason why I ask that is the fear that it will be further delayed because, uh, um, <clears throat> um, uh, because precisely in response to the questions of uh, Senator Lacson, it would appear that uh, it takes a little time <coughs> for, for the audit to be finished. Uh, and in this particular case, I can, I can imagine that uh, the voluminous records would require um, examination, would require time before it can be finished. Um, so, okay, so uh, can you commit to any time frame for the COA to come out with their findings uh, in this particular case? As far as I know, Your Honor, the ongoing uh, uh, investigation, audit investigation by the audit team created by the COA is ongoing. However, I, I heard that the reason why there is a delay, first, as you have said, the, the voluminous record, and second, uh, because of the pandemic, uh, most of our auditor also are are being are contracted COVID. Maybe that, but that's the reason of the delay. With regards to the completion of the report, uh, the commission proper will all will already have participation participation in the said uh, finding. If if 
uh, the team who audit the permit uh, already made a, a, a conclusion and the agreed party will uh, will appeal to the commission proper regarding the final result of the audit. Mm -hmm. uh, given all the circumstances uh, that you are faced with, as you said, the voluminous documents, the pandemic, can you give the committee uh, an approximate time frame when you think you can finish this investigation, assuming that uh, the, the committee gives its consent to your nominee, to your appointment, which I have no doubt it will, uh, assuming that you can assume by the first day of Jan or February. When do you think you can finish the audit? Uh, your Honor, the moment I assume as the commissioner of the Commission on Audit, I will try to have uh, the, 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 the audit team uh, have compared with me and uh, as much as possible give me the status of the report and ask them to expedite and as much as possible uh, give me exact uh, time frame where they can complete the report and only that, that I can commit or I can uh, uh, tell the your owner how much time they will complete, but as much as possible, I will ask them to, ask, to expedite the audit report of that particular transaction. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, ma'am. I, I may I request that the uh, uh, very uh, that, that the commissioner, after he assumes, uh, can inform the uh, this representation. Uh, uh, of the approximate time frame when the audit will be finished, uh, considering that it has already been delayed uh, on record, your chair has committed that uh, the findings will be uh, released to the uh, Blue Ribbon Committee by the end of the year. As I said, it has already been uh, three weeks uh, past the deadline, the self-imposed deadline of the uh, chairperson, uh, chairman, uh, I can appreciate that the uh, pandemic uh, has uh, prevented him from uh, uh, complying with his deadline, uh, but uh, given the circumstances, uh, when can the uh, uh, nominee uh, inform us in his own, uh, the, uh, his own personal view without binding the commission as to when the uh, COA findings can be released to the public? Ipana, can you make a tentative date by which you can furnish uh, an, uh, our senator the idea of uh, when you will make the audit report? Just an idea of when you will make the audit report final, the final audit report. Uh, in my uh, experience, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I will, I will. Uh, uh, initially said that uh, maybe from now, within six months, maybe uh, I will ask the team to expedite and release the report final. Within six months, did I hear, Madam Chair? Six months? Six months from today? Six yes, months from today? Uh, can you make it uh, <laughs> a little shorter? <laughs> you know, so, um, uh, yes, I join the opinion, I, I join the uh, call of the, of the chairperson. Alam niyo po, six months, wala na ako dito sa Senado, wala na po sa CA, <laughs> and wala na ako sa uh, Blue Ribbon. Uh, I would like to be a, a, a duly elected senator up to June 30. Uh, being a member of the Blue Ribbon and being a member of the Commission on of the, of the I'm sorry of the Commission on Appointments, I think it is reasonable for me to ex to expect that it be submitted uh, shortly, uh, because as I would repeat, ma Madam Chair, as I have emphasized, the Chair of the COA committed to the Blue Ribbon that the report will be submitted by December 31. It has already been uh, three weeks past the deadline. Uh, out of respect yeah, to, uh, to a constitutional body, we have not uh, uh, made any statement on this, but certainly I think uh, it is fair and the public would uh, be waiting for the 
co-audit uh, audit report, uh, the fraud investigation report on this family deal. Uh, so I, I think, uh, Ms. I, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Commissioner, three months is, uh, is unacceptable, but if that is your position, I, you know, I, 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 I would- Kaya ng three months, uh, Mr. Lipana. <laughs> Three months would be February, March, April. Uh, Your Honor, the reason why, why I said that, as I said before, uh, right now I have no idea regarding the status or uh, uh, audit states being conducted uh, by the special auditing. However, uh, the moment I assume I will call them and I will, I will, uh, I will uh, ask them to promise to me. Uh, to, if possible, is release uh, the audit report as much as possible uh, to meet your 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 request to make it uh, three months or less. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, as I said, uh, we afford a uh, constitutional body the appropriate the, the uh, respect that it deserves. Uh, but there are certain uh, obligations on the part of COA to the public uh, on, on this very critical uh, audit, fraud audit, which involves uh, billions, 42 billion to be exact, uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner, 42 billion in public funds where uh, rules were violated uh, left and right. Uh, so that I think the public is expecting uh, some report from COA. I would repeat, your chair has committed that uh, the uh, audit report will be released on December 31, 2021. Unfortunately, I will repeat, uh, uh, three weeks after the deadline, we have not even heard as to where the report when the report is coming out. It is in that sense that I joined the call of our vice chair that maybe uh, as, a, as a, uh, a commitment to this committee and to the commission, uh, if we can press, you know, the release of the report, it's already uh, three weeks after the deadline, maybe uh, by the end of February is not a, a reasonable request. Considering that this is already by the end of February, is two months after the deadline imposed by the chair himself as to when to finish this audit report. May I have your comment, uh, sir? Uh, your Honor, uh, the moment I assume the the as as the commissioner to miss an audit, I promise that I will look into this and I will. Uh, look the possible uh, of, uh, way to expedite this and submit the report to the to the blue ribbon committee of the senate okay well uh, so so you don't feel comfortable about giving this committee an approximate date when this report can be released to the public as suggested by our chairperson Your Honor, uh, wala pa po kasi ako, uh, wala pa po ako idea ko, sa, sabi ko nga po, nasa ang stage na po yung uh, audit na, na kinerate po na special audit to look into the particular transaction. Kaya, yun po, I promise that the moment I assume as commissioner, I will, uh, I will look into that, I will uh, ask the team what is the status, and I will report uh, to the to the to the uh, Senate uh, regarding the status and uh, the commitment of the team. How when they can uh, complete the report and release it to the Blue Ribbon Committee and to the public. So all right, uh, if that's the best that we can, uh, that's the best commitment we can draw from the nominee. You know, I, I. Uh, I, I guess our options are very limited. So just one final request. When can you submit to the 
to, to the uh, committee, uh, happy for initial representation, an approximate date when you can finish the report after conferring with the auditors who are working on the fraud audit. Just as I said, officially advise us. Your Honor, uh, by first week of February, I will, uh, I will uh, furnish that uh, report regarding the states of the audit. Okay, uh, I guess uh, <laughs> I, we have to settle with that, uh, Madam Chair, uh, given the fact that the uh, uh, tenure of this uh, commission will expire in about six months uh, or five months. That is why we are trying to get a commitment from the good uh, nominee, but uh, if that is the best that uh, uh, he can give, I don't want to delay his, his uh, the, the, the decision of the committee and the commission, uh, given this very critical office, but I do hope, and my message to the nominee is, uh, please do not disappoint this committee, nor the Filipino people, insofar as uh, this very critical function uh, of, of the, of the uh, POA vis-a-vis -vis formally, uh, if you can expedite, it would, it would be consistent with the mandate of COA, and uh, certainly it would go a long way in restoring the faith of the people in the ability of uh, the guardians of people's money, like the COA, to submit its report and do its uh, bound, its duty, its constitutional duty, to. To, to, to audit expenditure of public funds without fear or favor. And uh, therefore, uh, we would earnestly request, I would not stand in the way uh, in the uh, confirmation or, or in the grant or, or in, the, in the grant of the consent of the commission, uh, but I would request and, uh, we, the, uh, the uh, nominee uh, to, to for, to uh, uh, give us uh, a, a time frame within which this can be done. Uh, if not, maybe you can ask the uh, chairman of your commission, since he was the one who made this commitment, uh, when the co commission can fulfill this commitment to the public by releasing the uh, uh, audit report. I will repeat, on record, your chairman has committed December 31, 2021 uh, to finish and release to the Blue Ribbon, the uh, committee report. Up to this point, uh, we have not received any. So I think it is not unreasonable for us uh, representatives of the people to expect that this report be made public at the soonest possible time. Uh, given the circumstances. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, and we do hope to hear from the nominee uh, after he has assumed, uh, assuming that, uh, and I have no doubt that we will give our consent, after he is, uh, have taken his oath uh, as a commissioner, may we make a record our request that he informs the committee uh, of the status of the commitment of the chairman of the COA to release the findings by December 31, 2021. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, and uh, I do hope that we have made our point clear to the good to the nominee. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Drilon. We, uh, we appreciate your manifestation. And uh, they said that I have to report the acknowledgement, the online presence of uh, Committee Vice Chair Ferrer and Congressman Chipeco Jr. because they did not hear my manifestation. And of course, uh, uh, Senator Laxon is not virtual, virtually present, he is physically present. And I wish also to acknowledge the virtual presence of Congressman Heron. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there any more questions or comments? There being none, may we ask the acting majority floor leader? 
Yes, uh, I move to recommend to the plenary for the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana as commissioner, commission on audit for a term expiring on February 2nd, 2027 by Suse A. Fabia. Uh, there is a motion to recommend to plenary for the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana as commissioner, commission on audit for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, Vice Jose A. Fabia. Is there any objection? There being none, the same is hereby approved. Ma'am, may I make yes. a special request? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, in the uh, uh, motion of the good chair uh, for the uh, commission to give its <laughs> consent to the uh, to the nominee to the appointment of the nominee, may I request that included in that report uh, is the uh, request uh, of the committee that the report on the family investigation be done as the soonest possible time and submitted to the committee uh, and, 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 to the, uh, and to the commission. In other words, a statement that uh, in the course of this committee hearing, a commitment was made or a request was made uh, to that effect, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. If that will please, if that is possible, ma'am. Yeah, I, I will make that manifestation that the uh, commissioner uh, being confirmed by the commission on appointment will make a uh, give us an idea in on in the first week on the first week of february when they will be uh submitting the report on farmally and then uh they hope uh we hope that they can give the report on farmally as soon as possible uh he said three months but maybe he, he can do it in two months and uh at the same time, uh, there is also a request of a report from Senator Laxon. So we are manifesting that the uh, commissioner to be uh, uh, approved by the plenary will give that report to Senator Laxon. Yes, Would that be all right? Yes, just, just one final addition. Can you include as part of the report the fact that the chairman of the COA has committed that this report will be submitted uh, by December 30th, okay. 2021. That's on record, ma'am. So just include that, just include that statement if you if it's uh, all right with the good chair with the committee. Just just for the record that there is that commitment uh, to submit the COA report by December 31 of 2021. I was informed, Senator Drillon, that. Uh, Present online, Sikoa Chair Aguinaldo. Make, maybe he can answer your question. Thank you. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, certainly. Okay. So we call now on, uh, but we move first that we finish the motion. So, yes, the, Madam Chairperson. Yes, Madam yes. Chairperson. yes. I yes. just to clarify the reportorial requirement that I had manifested earlier, would that be submitted before he is confirmed in plenary? No, we're confirming him in plenary today. No, it, I mean, before, before that time, between now and that time, can he comply I, with my request to submit the number of cases, the, the yung backlog? Simply lang po yun, uh, Madam Chairperson. I think Kasi may uh, COVID siya. Uh, Senator Laxon, I wish to inform you that he is infected with COVID. That's why he had to appear online. Uh, I don't know if that will uh, prevent him from doing that. Uh, maybe we can ask him. He doesn't have to report here physically, Madam Chairperson. In this day and age of modern communication and information technology, maybe he can do that before he is confirmed before or he's presented before the plenary. If that Mr. is possible. Lip if not, then uh, we can wait. Uh, Mr. Lipana, uh, is that possible that you can uh, make a, uh, you can call the office and make a uh, report to Senator Laxon, your office, the office of COA. Yes, Your Honor, I will, I will, uh, I will contact now the office and get the data regarding that particular. Uh, uh... Okay, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. Maybe we can call now on Chairman Aguinaldo to answer the question of Senator Drillon para <laughs> hindi naman kawawa tong ating ano, <laughs> nominee. <laughs> okay, uh, we acknowledge Chairman Aguinaldo. Just to make it yes, clear, uh, just to make it clear, I am not interposing any objection to the confirmation. Yeah, we have, we have confirmed uh, the nomination of uh, uh, Mr. Mario Lipana has been confirmed by the committee, so we will go on plenary. So the, uh, the, it's just uh, that we are facilitating your questions. That's why we're calling uh, uh, COA Chairman Aguinaldo. Is that okay? No, no. Just I just wanted to make of record that I was asking uh, for this uh, time frame, but I have also made very clear that I will not stand in the way uh, for the committee's recommendation uh, to the plenary that the consent of the commission to the appointment of the uh, uh, nominee be given. That is all that I was saying, ma'am. No, uh, it will not stand in the way. We have confirmed him in, I know. In... Um, you know, yes, it will not stand in the way because I did not raise any objection. I could yeah. have prolong this. Uh, this yeah, <laughs> yeah we appreciate that, <laughs> Senator Drillon. So, yes, but... but uh, uh, I but to to maybe, you have to have for you to have peace of mind. We're calling Chairman Aguinaldo because he was the one who made the promise. Yeah, it's not Is for my peace of mind, ma'am. It's in the, for public service. Uh, okay, for, for public service. Oh. Would you like me to call Chairman Aguinaldo, Mr. Yes, Trilo, uh, yes, Senator yes, Trilo? Uh, okay. Yes, okay. So uh, I wish to inform the body that we have approved. Uh, the nomination of uh, of Mr. Lipana in the in the committee, and we will go to plenary. But at the same time, we are asking Chairman Aguinaldo to answer the question of Senator Drillon. Thank Madam you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, uh, yes. the stenographic notes uh, do not yet show the. The motion has been approved on the okay. recommendation. May we please repeat the okay. motion of the majority leader, Madam Chair? Okay. Will you please uh, repeat again, uh, Acting Majority Floor Leader? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairperson. I move to recommend to the plenary for the Commission to give its consent to the nomination of Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana as Commissioner, Commission on Audit. For a term expiring on February 2, 2027, by Jose A. Fabia. There is a motion to recommend to the plenary for the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana as commissioner, commission on audit for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, by Jose A. Fabia. Is there any objection? I second. Second. Oh, okay. So there's no objection. There being none, the same is hereby approved. Thank you very much. Now we call on uh, uh, Chairman Aguinaldo to answer the question of Senator Drillon. Yes, uh, good morning, Your Honor. Um, we actually sent a letter to the Blue Ribbon Committee last uh, January 21, updating them on the status of the audit report. Uh, if I recall correctly, um, what I did mention before during the Blue Ribbon Committee was that the um, special audit team had been given 90 days. But I candidly said that it's unlikely that they'll be able to finish it in 90 days. It will probably be longer because of the volume, uh, voluminous documents, restrictions of the pandemic, because um, our auditors also conduct interviews. Hindi lang, they don't just look at documents, they actually conduct uh, interviews not only with the government officials but also with uh, private individuals no, involved in these transactions. Uh, although um, I did say that we'll do our best to get it done by December 31. Unfortunately, um, uh, the special audit team actually gave me a list of uh, of uh, reasons which I listed in the letter no, to the Blue Ribbon Committee. Uh, first of all, mobility restrictions. Although a lot of the work was done remotely and virtually, uh, as can be done naman. Pero uh, there's still some limitations uh, because of that. Um, there were belated submission of documents um, from DOH, PSDBM, from the BIR, 
uh, even from from uh, some of these private entities because they also contacted uh, the um, supposed bidders or those who could actually supply um, some of these goods. And medyo nahirapan rin sila to get uh, responses from them. Um, also from regular... Uh, and from the government units. And uh, part of, I think, the reason also um, it, it uh, dragged on a bit is because um, during, uh, one thing we noticed is that during each um, Blue Ribbon Committee hearing, there was always some new information or evidence that would come out that would not, they would now have to factor in in their discussion. So, kaya medyo na, ano, na siguro na delay rin ng konti because of that, no? Now, as to the status, um, the special audit team informed me, and this was five, um, six days ago, that they're already finalizing the audit observations and findings and preparing the audit highlights. Uh, the next step, well, once they do that, will be to schedule an exit conference, uh, primarily, I think, with PSDBM. I don't know if they will also do one with the OH, but um, for sure with PSDBM, that they're targeting within the first two weeks of February. Um, to schedule it. Um, what they told me was most likely uh, they'll be able to finalize the audit highlights by end of February and hopefully issue the report within a month um, after. Um, being They have to compile all these uh, documents and, and all that. Um, we do have a quality assurance process within the commission so that um, it's not just they coming out with the report and issuing it. It has to go through that kind of review. But um, it's a very targeted review, so hindi naman yung comprehensive review. Um, as to the concern raised by the good senator earlier, um, how much time it would take once Commissioner um, Mario would be, if Commissioner Mario would be um, confirmed this afternoon, um, usually ang fraud audit report and special audit reports are no longer uh, reviewed by the commission proper. Um, normally, it's the chair who issues the transmetal and um, in past um, audit reports that we've issued, um, we only do a cursory review of the findings. We don't go into in-depth, but we look at consistency between what they found and what the evidence has presented. So it's really more of, a, a, you might say, a legal review of, of the conclusions that uh, came up with. So it shouldn't um, derail the uh, transmittal of the report, the fact that you do have, you might have a new commissioner or even a new chairperson by then. Um, it's just a matter of transmitting the report once it's done. And um, if there's any review, it shouldn't uh, take much time because you're just looking at consistency of findings. That's it. So I, I probably can give that assurance that it shouldn't derail the process. Once the report submitted, uh, that should be given to the Blue Ribbon Committee within maybe not more than one week or two weeks at most from the time that it's submitted to the um, to the commissioner or to the chairperson. Um, sir, Senator Drillon, you're mute. Yeah, <coughs> yeah sorry. Uh, thank you very much, but, uh, Mr. Chairman, for that uh, enlightening report. Uh, so, uh, uh, I can appreciate that because of the uh, circumstances, uh, uh, you could not, uh, for, uh, could, not, could, not, could not fulfill that commitment because of circumstances beyond your control. I fully appreciate that. And uh, for the record, you're saying that uh, not later than the end of March, uh, the Blue Ribbon Committee could uh, receive uh, the final report of the uh, COA. Is that a correct uh, statement, sir? Yes, I think it's a reasonable period within which to submit the final the final report. Um, the audit highlights would, would probably be finalized by end of um, February, but the final report, probably March would be a reasonable period, um, uh, uh, more or less one month from the time that the audit highlights are submitted. Uh, you cannot release the highlights of the audit report uh, by the end of February. I will check with the uh, special audit uh, team. Well, actually with their superiors, um, their immediate superiors, well, if they have any existing policy on the issuance of the fraud audit highlights. Normally so, this goes first to the um, agency involved. Sila muna. Um, 
as part of due process requirements also. But I'll find out from them kung pwede rin i-release na rin yun sa Blue, uh, Blue Ribbon Committee po. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the, uh, whatever is the situation, uh, there is a commitment that by the end of March, the final uh, POA audit report will be released to the Blue Ribbon uh, and to the public. Is that a, that, that's a commitment that uh, the good chair has made of record. Well, I think it's a reasonable period within which the report should come out. Um, and I'll, I'll discuss it with the special services sector um, after this call uh, as to the timelines. Okay. Um, it's also possible that they could release, uh, of course, subject to their um, assent, they could release uh, the report in parts as well. That's also another option that we can look at. Uh, so that um, if there are some parts that are ready, it shouldn't be delayed by those parts that are not yet ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll leave it at that. Uh, if the uh, uh, chairman will confirm this in writing, we would appreciate it. But in any case, uh, these uh, proceedings are recorded and therefore we can rely on the verbal representations <coughs> by the good chairman. Uh, I'm, ha I'm, I'm satisfied with the answers, ma'am. Uh, I just want to know when will the uh, term of the good chairman uh, expire? <laughs> if, uh, that's a public record anyway. I mean, there's nothing. Yeah. Uh, uh, Your Honor, I have one week to go. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you have one week to go? One I week guess. to go, Your Honor. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, with more reason, uh, given that, I didn't know that, uh, Madam Chair, uh, if the good chair can, uh, if the good uh, chairman of the commission can confirm in writing his statements, at least before he leaves office, uh, I, 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 that, that would be satisfactory to, uh, to, to this representation. And uh, if that commitment can be placed in writing, although stated already as part of the records of this committee, uh, I think there will be no harm given the fact that uh, you will be leaving office or in about a week's time. If we can have that, uh, that, uh, that letter within the week, uh, Mr. Chairman, if that, yes. is, if that is okay. Yes, I'll, I'll uh, submit the letter to the Blue Ribbon Committee, um, uh, not later than tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I have no more questions, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Drillon, and thank you, uh, sa ating uh, COA Chairman Aguinaldo and uh, thank you for answering uh, their question so everything will be clarified. Majority Floor Leader? Yeah, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn the meeting. On motion of the Majority Floor Leader, Julie, second. <laughs> oh, please second. 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 Okay. On the motion of the majority floor leader, Julie seconded, there being no objection, the meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you very much for your cooperation. <laughs>
the eighth meeting of the Committee on National Defense of the Commission Appointments in the third regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. Mr. Secretary, can we call the roll? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The Committee on National Defense of the Commission on Appointments, the Honorable Chairperson, Representative Luis John John A. Ferrer de Port, is present. The other officers and members of this committee are Alvarez Jr. Arbison Present. De La Rosa. Present. Ayan, buksan mo. Go. Present. Lapson. Pimentel the third. Present po, go, sir. Duly noted, Senator Go. Pimentel the third. Pagras. Chepeco Jr. Present. Noel Pangilinan Po Present Ramirez Sato Present Recto Present Revilla Jr. Present Villar Present Subiri Zamora. Present. Almario. Villanueva. Pancho. Present. Drilon. Present. Advincula. Present. Heron. Present. Present for present. With 17 members present in person, including the chair, and two members present online, with a total of 19 members present, the existence of a quorum is hereby declared. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Chair, I move that we dispense when the, with the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting held on December 15, 2021, and consider the same as approved. Is there an objection? Chair hears none. The reading of the minutes of the previous meeting held on December 15, 2021 is dispensed with, and the same is considered approved. Well, Maga Po, members of the Committee on National Defense, the Commission Appointments, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Today, your committee will deliberate on the ad interim appointments of 17 General Officers of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Please stand up as your name is called. Andres C. Centino to the rank of General. Roy M. Galido to the rank of Major General. Connor Anthony D. Canlas Sr. to the rank of Lieutenant General. Pedro C. Balisi Jr. to the rank of Brigadier General. J.T. T. Bahet to the rank of Brigadier General. Andrew D. Costello to the rank of Major General. Romeo T. Racadio to the rank of Brigadier General. Romeo S. Bronner Jr to the rank of Lieutenant General. Jimmy D. Larida, to the rank of Brigadier General. Eric E. Nicanor, to the rank of Major General. Leonardo Aliandro V. Abeleda III, to the rank of Brigadier General. Frederick M. Cutler, to the rank of Brigadier General. 
Ernesto C. Torres Jr. to the rank of Lieutenant General. Alduin I. Almase to the rank of Brigadier General. Ray B. Alemania to the rank of Brigadier General. Alex S. Villera to the rank of Major General. And Randolph G. Kabangbang to the rank of Brigadier General. Mr. Secretary, kindly report on the jurisdiction requirements and other pertinent information relative to the 17 ad interim appointments in compliance with the new rules of the Commission and the new rules of the Standing Committee. But before you proceed, we'd like to acknowledge the presence online of Senator Ralph Recto. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, Your Honors. The 17 ad interim appointments dated December 17, 2021, January 3, 14, and 16, 2022, under consideration today by this committee, were received by the Commission on December 28, 2021, January 10, 17, and 19, 2022, and were forthwith referred by the Senate President and CA Chairperson, Vicente Ciso, to the third to the Committee on National Defense pursuant to Section 16, Chapter 5 of the New Rules of the Commission. The said ad interim appointments were published on various dates in two newspapers of general circulation and broadcast over PTV4 pursuant to Section 2, Article 2 of the New Rules of the Standing Committees. All the appointees complied with the submission of the mandatory documentary requirements as provided in Section 24, Chapter 6 of the New Rules of the Commission. Your, sec your Secretariat is in receipt of a letter dated January 25 from the Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel, J1, Major General Adriano S. Perez, Jr., addressed to the Committee Chairperson, Representative Luis John John A. Ferrer IV, requesting for the waiver of personal appearances of the following general officers who tested positive for COVID-19. Lieutenant General Connor Anthony D. Canlas Sr., Brigadier General Aldwin I. Almase, Brigadier General Randolph G. Kabangbang, and Brigadier General Jimmy D. Larida. Nevertheless, the above mentioned general officers are appearing online in today's hearing. The members of this committee have been provided with a copy of said letter request. There is no opposition filed against any of the appointees. That is all, Mr. Chairperson, Your Honours. Mr. Chair, May I move that the letter request dated January 25, 2022 of Major General Perez, Jr to allow the four AFP general officers to appear online before this committee today as reported by the CA secretary be approved. I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there any objection? Hearing none, same is hereby approved. Mr. Secretary, kindly administer the oath to all the appointees, including those who are present online. And they all stand up, including those online. And please raise your right hand. Do you all swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? So help you, God. Mr. Chairman, they are now all under oath. Thank you, Paul, Mr. Secretary. May we now call on General Andres C. Centino, sir, the most senior among the officers now under consideration and the current Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. To take a seat in front. Sir, you may now give your opening statement if you have any. Good evening, Honorable Chair, members of the Committee on National Defense Commission on Appointments. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am General Andres Centino, 
0-9851 Philippine Army, the Chief of Staff Armed Forces of the Philippines. I was, I was uh, designated as the Chief of Staff last November 12, uh, 2021. I am appearing together with uh, 16 other general officers of the AAP before the Committee uh, on National Defense uh, Commission on Appointment as uh, part of the constitutional yeah, yeah. process. Of all, later, later. For our designation to be confirmed. And uh, we are appearing before this committee, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, the floor is now open for any inquiries from uh, our members. Uh, we would like to recognize Senator Bongo. Sen. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Pa. Mr. Chairman and uh, distinguished colleagues, I am here with you today to extend my uh, full support for the ad interim appointments of the 17 uh, generals of the armed forces of the Philippines. It is with a great honor and pride uh, that I express my profound gratitude to each and every one of you for your uh, invaluable uh, service to the Filipino nation. Mr. Chair, allow me to make of record my support for the confirmation of the ad interim appointments of uh, General Andres Centeno, na naging uh, uh, siyang, uh, uh, chief ng army. Again po, eh, ating uh, chief ng uh, armed forces of the Philippines. Chief of Staff. Of course, kay uh, Lieutenant General Conor Anthony Canlas, uh, uh, ngayon po ay uh, Commanding General ng Philippine Air Force, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Romeo Roner, ngayon po ay uh, Commanding General ng uh, Philippine Army, Major General uh, Roy Galido na naging Brigade Commander ng 601st Infantry Brigade at uh, 6th Infantry Division, at ngayon po ay Inspector General at uh, Leader General Pedro Balisi, uh, and po'y uh, Brigade Commander po ng 1st Mechanized uh, Infantry Brigade ng Armor Division, Philippine Army, Maguindanao, Brigadier General J.T. Bahet, uh, ngayon po'y kasalukuyang uh, Commander ng 51st Engineer Brigade, Philippine Army, dyan po sa Camp General Atien sa Quezon City, Major General uh, Andro Costello, uh, ngayon po'y uh, Commander ng 7th Infantry uh, Division yan po sa Fort Magsaysay, Nueva Ecija. Brigadier General Romeo Racadio. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, ngayon po ay uh, salukuyang ananaging Chief of Unified Command, Western Command General Headquarters, AFP Wide Service Support Unit, Camp General uh, Ricardo Palawan. At kasalukuyang Commander po ng 2nd Marine Brigade, Philippine Marine Corps, Marine Barracks uh, sa Tawi-Tawi. And of course, kay Brigadier General uh, uh, Jimmy Larida, uh, ngayon po'y uh, kasalukuyang commander po ng 3rd Marine Brigade, Philippine Marine uh, Corps ng Palawan. Uh, Major General Eric uh, Nicanor, uh, na naging uh, AP Systems Engineering Office Chief, at ngayon Deputy Chief of Staff for Communication, Electronics and Information Systems, J6 po ng uh, Armed Forces. Brigadier General Leandro Abileda III, uh, na naging Deputy Brigade Commander po ng uh, 502nd at kasalukuyang Deputy Commander po ng uh, NOLCOM sa Tarlac. And let me uh, not forget uh, Brigadier General Frederick uh, Cutler na nagsilbing uh, Wing Commander for uh, 10th uh, Maintenance Wing Philippine uh, Air Force, Clark Air Base at kasalukuyan po ng uh, Wing Commander ng uh, 205th uh, po sa uh, Ebwen uh, Air Base sa Cebu. Of course, kay Lieutenant General uh, Ernesto Torres na naging 10th uh, Division uh, Commander at ngayon po ay uh, NOLCOM uh, Commander. Brigadier General Alduin uh, Almase na naging Deputy Chief of Staff na Chief of Staff po ng 9th uh, Infantry Division at kasalukuyang Brigade Commander po ng 903rd dyan po sa Castillo sa Obsogon. Brigadier General Ray Alemania uh, ngayon po ay uh, commanding uh, officer ng 2nd Mechanized Infantry Brigade Armored Division, Philippine Army, sa Lanao del Norte. 
and um, Major General Alex Rillera, ang kasalukuyan pong uh, J3, Deputy Chief of Tower Operations ng Armed Forces of the Philippines. And uh, siyempre po, uh, si Brigadier General Randolph uh, Kabangbang, uh, ngayon po ay dating na assigned po sa Task Force Tabaw at kasalukuyan pong uh, Presidential Security Group uh, Commander po sa Malacanang. Salamat po sa inyong uh, lahat. Uh, isa lang po ang paalala namin sa inyo. Sana po yung, uh, unahin niyo po yung pagsiservisyo sa, uh, sa ating uh, kapwa Pilipino. Sa bayan po at sa tao. Our country will forever be grateful and indebted to all of you for your unparalleled uh, service to the Filipino people and for continuously ensuring our safety. Uh, lalo lalo na po kayo sa panahon ng uh, pandemya. Malaki po ang ginagampanan po ng ating armed forces. Maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, katapatan at pagsiservisyo sa ating bayan. Congratulations sa inyong lahat and uh, full support po kami sa inyo. Mabuhay po kayo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat po, Senator Bongo. Senator Bong Revilla, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is to place on record my full support to the confirmation of the ad interim appointments of our distinguished and gallant generals led by General Andres Santino, uh, the, the Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. I am uh, confident that uh, his 37 years of exemplary military service, vast experience in conflict-ridden areas of the country, and high regard for the welfare of our men and women in the military will uh, enable him to lead the institution in fulfilling its important uh, mandate Congratulations, and uh, I wish him success and uh, productivity in his uh, relatively long term of office of uh, 15 months. Also, I would like to manifest my uh, full support and commendation to uh, Lieutenant General Romeo Bronner, Jr., Commanding General of the Philippine Army, Lieutenant General Canor Anthony Canla, Sr., Commanding General of the Philippine Air Force, Lieutenant General Ernesto Torres Jr., Commander of the Northern uh, Luzon Command, and all the generals appearing before this committee. Uh, we take note of your accomplishments and uh, courage in the battlefield. And uh, as we also recognize your equally important achievements in non-combat missions, socioeconomic and humanitarian efforts during this time. You have been uh, instrumental in the timely uh, rollout of the national vaccination program, as well as in the speedy delivery of much needed assistance for the typhoon victims. You have been the quiet and invincible force behind the success of many other government programs in pursuit of peace, unity and progress. Uh, we thank you for your service and sacrifice for our country. Saludo po ako sa inyo. Saludo po kaming lahat sa inyo. Mabuhay ko, mabuhay po kayong lahat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat po, Senator Bong Revilla. Any other member? Um, Senator Bato de Rosa, sir? Yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, I have uh, uh, three questions. For uh, One it's for uh, uh, the Chief of Staff, one for the uh, CG Philippine Army and one for the CG Philippine Air Force. Can I make it uh, in a one time, Mr. President? Tuloy -tuloy lang? Apa. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first, uh, to the Chief of Staff, uh, General Centeno, uh, I would like to ask him uh, uh, during the budget deliberations of the AFPDND, you boldly claim that uh, by the end of uh, the Duterte administration, the insurgency, insurgency problem is uh, finished. And uh, today, we are roughly uh, uh, around uh, six months before the end of uh, the Duterte administration. And uh, again, uh, but, but before, before uh, shooting this question, uh, let me first congratulate you for your uh, recent successes na nangyayari ngayon sa inyong uh, uh, 
internal security operations wherein um, na, nakuha ninyo yung mga malalaking commander ng New People's Army at sa ngayon ay nakita natin ni eh, medyo nauubos na ninyo yung mga mabibigat na commanders ng uh, New People's Army and I would like to uh, heartily congratulate you for your efforts and uh, I'm sure uh, this uh, your effort could be put to waste kung uh, walang support yan galing from of course from the president and of course coming from the NTFL CAC and uh, malaki talagang impact ng NTFL CAC dyan sa ating counter insurgency efforts so uh, my question is uh, six months roughly six months prior to the end of uh, the Duterte administration are we still on track uh, are you still uh, confident that your promise to me will be uh, will be accomplished go ahead sir thank you mr chair um the president gave us uh, the mandate or the task to uh end the local conflict within his term and that is until june of uh, this year it's barely five months from now uh, we have uh, seen this a, as a very uh, gargantuan, gargantuan task when we were first given uh, this uh, assignment but as the deadline appro approaches we saw that uh, the task is indeed possible to be accomplished in the past uh, months or the past year we have seen a very significant increase in our operational successes uh, we have uh, achieved in one year uh, perhaps the equivalent uh, gains in the past five years in terms of uh, utilization of uh, uh, enemy personalities in terms of guerrilla fronts dismantled in terms of barangay influence barangays cleared in terms of uh, key leaders uh, utilized in fact in the recent months we have uh, uh, done uh, what seemed to be impossible in the past we have uh, we were able to neutralize the top uh, leadership of the Communist Party of the Philippines. And uh, it is now down to 41 guerrilla fronts. The number of uh, personalities is down to uh, 2,800. Before it was around 4,000 when we started uh, implementing Executive Order 70. That was the time when uh, the NTFL CAC was uh, created. We saw that uh, our gains uh, increased exponentially. This is because uh, we have believed all along that military, military solution is uh, not the solution to all this uh, insurgency problem. Um, with the particip participation of uh, all agencies of government, being compelled with that executive order we were able to i mean the armed forces of the philippines was able to focus on our core function which is going after the armed group in the past we were doing other um, activities not necessarily our main function which deprive us of the time the resources and the personnel to really go after the insurgents and so when uh, we had uh, executive order 70 the agencies such as the dilg the dpwh the dswd the tesla and all other agencies were with us al along with us uh, in going to the uh, affected areas the far-flung areas doing their part in addressing the uh, complex uh, problems of insurgency and with uh, the five months remaining, we are confident that we can uh, achieve uh, uh, the victory uh, in addressing insurgency. 
Um, we have increased the rate of dismantling of the guerrilla fronts, and we believe in the last uh, months we will be able to um, dismantle these remaining uh, NPA units. Yesterday, we just had our command conference, and I uh, was emphatic in my directive that uh, in the last remaining months, all resources of the AFP will be uh, used or utilized in complying with the mandate given to us by the president. Aside, of, co aside of course, from uh, ensuring that uh, we are able to uh, secure our communities and uh, facilitate the conduct of safe, secured, and fair elections this coming May. That's Thank my you. answer, Honorable Chair. Thank you, uh, General Centino. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, uh, I agree with you uh, that militarily, militarily, we can, uh, we will be able to defeat the insurgency problem uh, after uh, once the Duterte administration expires. But uh, politically, I'm sure, hanggat anjang pa yung mga legal fronts na yan, hindi hindi pa talaga natin totally mawala itong problema natin sa insurgency. So, granting after the Duterte presidency, the next president that will take over uh, that will take over ay mahina ang drive against the CPP NPA or uh, walang military background unlike uh, senator Lacson na he uh, was in the thick of the fight against this uh, insurgents uh, before uh, how fast do you think can the uh, insurgency problem uh, recover militarily Granting na andiyan pa rin yung mga legal funds na yan. Pagkatapos ni President Duterte, ubos ang armadong uh, pwersa ng NPA. Pumasok ngayon ang bagong uh, presidente na hindi kagaya ni Senator Lacson ang abilidad. Ngayon, nagpabaya sa problema ng insurgency. How fast can the insurgency problem recover? As I mentioned earlier, sir, um, the problems of uh, insurgency is uh, very complex. It doesn't have to be the military solution that uh, we can provide that uh, will ultimately end insurgency. There are basic uh, pr problems, social problems uh, that has to be addressed also. Um, for instance, the um, inadequate government services provided in some areas. When government is uh, absent, nandyan po ang New People's Army to provide that. And uh, we are very optimistic that uh, with uh, the support of the administration in terms of providing uh, infrastructures, uh, programs, uh, to these affected areas, yung matagal na pong wala ay nabibigay po natin. Um, we have uh, provided programs for those who decide to go down from among the rebels. We have the Enhanced Comprehensive Local Integration Program for the ECLIP that, be, that is being provided for those who want to go down. And they are given a second uh, chance in their lives. And that's why uh, we see that hindi lang po ang AFP, PNP ang solusyon ng ating problema, kundi lahat po sa gobyerno. And uh, we would like to believe, sir, that uh, even as militarily we can uh, solve the, pro the problem of the insurgents per se, yung problema ng insurgency may still remain if the other uh, aspects or causes of insurgency are left unaddressed. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Uh, very honest answer. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, th thank you, General Centeno. Can I proceed with the Commanding General, Philippine Army? Uh, okay po. Thank you, uh, General Centeno, General Bronner. Go ahead, Chatter De Rosa. Yes, uh, General Brawler. Uh, again, uh, like the Chief of Staff, I would like to congratulate you 
Dahil alam mo naman natin na yung uh, insurg insurgency problem ay the one bearing the brunt is the Philippine Army. Kaya I would like to congratulate you for uh, your troops accomplishment. Uh, uh, alam kong uh, you were uh, on the ground during the Marawi siege dahil uh, nakikita kita doon uh, every time bumibisita ako sa sa Marawi siege sa Marawi ay uh, andun ka you been the I think you're the brigade commander the, on the later part of the Marawi siege Yes, sir, that is correct. I was the uh, brigade commander of the 103rd Brigade in uh, Marawi City, sir. So you were there up to the liberation of uh, Marawi. Uh, am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, because uh, nakita kita doon nung nandun na nag-bibisita uh, ko. Now, my question is, uh, uh, alam kong nakita mo yung uh, sacrifices, yung paghihirap ng mga, mga kababayan natin sa Marawi during the war. Can just imagine yung mga bumba na tumatama doon sa kanilang mga kabahayan na nasisira yung mga bahay. Everything uh, was destroyed. Now, uh, the Marawi Compensation Bill is still pending in the Senate. Uh, what do you think? Uh, how important is this uh, bill to be passed by the Senate as far as the security situation of not only Marawi but the whole uh, Southern Philippines, uh, particularly uh, the the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region, how, how, uh, regarding the uh, security situation, how important is this? Uh, taking into consideration the potential uh, radicalization of these victims, na talagang ma-influence ito at ma-exploit ng mga mga terorista uh, once uh, they will. Uh, they, they, they will be left hanging or uh, uh, pakiramdam nila na pabayaan sila ng gobyerno. What yes, is sir. your take on this? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for that question, uh, sir. Sir, I believe that this bill is very important because really the uh, people, the residents of uh, Marawi City are themselves the uh, biggest victims of the uh, Marawi siege. So, I just believe, sir, that uh, they are rightfully, um, they deserve, sir, to be compensated for all the uh, losses that they incurred. You know? Because uh, they were living peacefully in their city uh, when the uh, members of the Maote ISIS uh, started to attack and uh, lay siege to the city. Uh, they really had uh, no control over this. And so, sir, uh, I believe that uh, with this bill, they will be rightfully compensated and they can, again, rebuild not just their homes, but their lives. So I believe, sir, that uh, this is very important. It will also um, prevent the uh, terrorist groups from using this as an issue for them to be able to recruit more members. And I am happy, sir, to note that uh, despite the delay uh, in the passing of this uh, bill, uh, the residents of uh, Marawi City still have a uh, nice disposition, sir, a good disposition, and uh, they have trust in the government as to the, uh, the uh, reconstruction and the rebuilding of their city. So, sir, that is my uh, answer to your question. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you for that input. Uh, totoo yung sinasabi mo, the Marawi people are still very optimistic na mangyayari itong uh, kanilang uh, compensation. So, yung alam mo na yung failed uh, promises pag uh, nangyari yan is uh, mas mabigat ang risk back, di ba? So I hope your uh, your your explanation can help me convince my colleagues to pass this bill. Maraming salamat uh, General Browner and uh, I know you you are a very uh, good officer. Uh, since uh, you are my plebe, alam kong uh, you, I know how I I uh, how I rear you. So company mate ko sa Alpha si General Browner. 
So thank you, General Browner, uh, for that answer. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I proceed with the Commanding General of the Philippine Air Force? Uh, with with Mr. your Mr. indulgence, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Laxon. No, with with the permission of Senator De La Rosa and, of course, yes, Senator Pina, because she's uh, next uh, in line. General Browner. I would like I, to ask this question because the Marawi siege was mentioned. General Browner. Can we return to your seat? Well, General Bronner, first congratulations, no? And uh, you and I know that the Supreme Court has recently upheld the constitutionality of the Anti-Terrorism Act, no? And uh, one of the features of that act is even in the preparation stage, even in the planning stage, we call it in Kuwait offenses. You can already take action. And like uh, during the Marawi siege, you were helpless because you were uh, already armed with the intelligence uh, information that something was afoot, right? But you could not act on it because of the, uh, because in the planning stage, you cannot, uh, you could not still take action. But under the Anti-Terrorism Act, which I mentioned has been upheld uh, by the Supreme Court uh, in regard to its uh, constitutionality, even in the preparation and planning stage, you can take action. My question is, are there intelligence reports pointing to some possible terroristic activities, not just in Marawi, but in other areas in the country, without sacrificing uh, the security aspect, you know, general information down? Uh, sir, right now I'm not uh, aware of any uh, plans by any terrorist group, sir, to uh, launch any uh, terroristic uh, acts with the magnitude of uh, Marawi city, sir. Yes, I would just like to inform you and the rest of the officers present here today that uh, there's that provision. No? Yes, sir. So you can uh, effectively preempt or prevent the occurrence of a terroristic act for that matter because of that particular provision. I would suggest that uh, all of you uh, should read all the provisions under this because you know there are several safeguards and you should also warn your men that if and when they conduct arrest they should be conscious or wary of the safeguards that we inputted under the law so it's good to hear that there are no intelligence reports uh, pointing to uh, imminent uh, terroristic uh, attacks uh, anywhere in the country but uh, just to inform you of that uh, provision and the uh, Supreme Court uh, upholding the constitutionality of the, I think it's 11479. You know? So thank you, John Bronner, and thank you, John Santino. Congratulations again. Thank you, Senator Laxon. Thank you, John Bronner. Before we continue, Senator De La Rosa, we'd like to acknowledge the presence, online presence of Senator Francis Pangilinan. Um, you may continue, Senator De La Rosa. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, uh, General uh, Conor Calas, uh, ready? Your yes, Your Honor. Oh, online ka pala. Kaakala ko, andyan ka oh, sa... Yes, yes, sir. I uh, got tested positive for uh, COVID-19, sir. Pinablan ka rin pala. <laughs> anyway, Conor, my... Yes, my, yes sir. Yeah, uh, my question is uh, very light. Uh, uh, how, how important is your uh, uh, being an infantryman first before you become an um, Air Force officer in the development of your career. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Honor, for that question. Uh, just a brief background, sir. Uh, before I became an Air Force guy, I was with the ground forces, particularly the Philippine Constabulary, under the leadership of uh, our battalion commander then, Regional Special Action Force 11, then First Lieutenant Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Uh, the good thing, the experience I uh, earned there as a ground force, I learned the importance of, uh, of uh, intelligence and joint operations. In fact, sir, uh, when we had our first encounter in uh, Mati Davao Oriental, and in which happened actually two times, 
uh, I learned that there should really be good intelligence and uh, joint operations. For one thing, uh, we were we sadly lost one of our classmates during that encounter, which lasted for uh, four hours, and uh, the the need for the uh, joint operations like air power or close air support was really a necessity because of the numerous uh, uh, bunkers and running foxholes of the enemy foxholes of the enemy where uh, most of our platoon was uh, a little Yes, Army, Air Force, and Navy joined together to defeat the enemy. And right now, I I seem to realize that it's working, where the softening of the target, softening of the enemy forces, is necessary before the ground troops enter a particular area and clear the the uh, the camps or or training grounds of the uh, CPP and PA at that time. So that's that's how I learned that uh, the joint operations of uh, all the major services play a vital role in defeating the enemy. And thanks to uh, uh, then Lieutenant De La Rosa who taught us how to survive. That's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, General Carlos. Uh, you know, uh... Ngayong ikaw ay uh, commanding general na ng Philippine Air Force. I, I hope and I pray na hindi mo talaga makalimutan yung experience natin noon kung how important is the close air support pag ikaw ay naikwinto sa baba. Dahil uh, if you can remember, during our encounter, uh, hanggang natapos yung encounter natin, hanggang nakawithdraw tayo, yung ating radio operator ay sige tawag Yung call sign natin was Striker at uh, yung uh, Air Force was Hornet. Strike, uh, Hornet Striker, Hornet Striker. Yun pala, wala pala talagang uh, available na close air support. Niloko lang pala tayo nung uh, provincial director na sabi niya mayroong close air support. We were uh, adamant in attacking that enemy position. Dahil plenum yun ng NPA, if you can remember. All the NPA yes, so uh, Dabao Sur, Dabao Norte, Dabao Oriental, Kumbal, Surigao Sur, Davao City, we're uh, having a plenum more, numbering to more or less uh, 800 in PA. Uh, tayo, we're only numbering 171. Company plus, isang kumpanya plus uh, Capgo. So 171 lang tayo against uh, more or less 800. Napakalaking pwersa yun. Uh, it cost the life of, uh, a, lot of our, uh, a lot of our people and including your classmate, your mista. Lieutenant then Lieutenant Flores na namatay sa inquintro na yun. So, sana ma-realize ma, ma, ma mo talaga how important pag may tumingi na tulong na ground force sa'yo na reinforcement, being the commander of the Air Force, magpadala ka kaagad. Dahil, uh, as I've said, natapos na yung inquintro, nandoon natin sa barracks, yung ating uh, radio operator ay na warsyak, na tulala. Sige pa rin, Hornet Striker, Hornet Striker, kahit wala na tayo sa uh, area. Dahil uh, yun nga, wala palang uh, nakaready na helicopter na mag po sa atin. So, so thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing your uh, experience. Uh, that was indeed a suicide mission yung ginawa natin. You can just imagine uh, naka, yung plenum na 800, papasokin lang ng 171 na uh, Philippine Constabulary plus CAPGO. But uh, at least we survive at uh, nakaarating tayo sa panahon na ito. And we thank God and we... we, we we honor our people who died uh, uh, during those encounters. So thank you, uh, General uh, uh, Canlas, for uh, that uh, for sharing your experience. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat po, uh, Senator Mato de Rosa. Mr. Chairman. Now the chair recognize the. Hey, we like to acknowledge, no, uh, Representative Nene Sato, ma'am. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do not have any questions uh, for any nominees, but uh, I would just want to manifest my strong support 
for the confirmation of uh, the ad interim appointment of uh, General Brigadier General Eric Espinas Nicanor, the incumbent Deputy Chief of Staff for Communications, Electronics, and Information Systems to the rank of Major General. He is from my hometown and my home province, San Jose Occidental, Mindoro. This representation knows him and his family very well. He is a pride of Occidental Mindoro for being one of the most decorated soldiers from our province. We take, we take pride in um, uh, recognizing his expertise in amphibious warfare, specifically in the fields of naval system engineering, um, command and control, computer, communications, intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition, logistics, and reconnaissance. We also take pride in acknowledging that he is uh, recognized uh, in the service as one of the more experienced and effective intelligence and counterterrorism experts and combat officers. In view of all this, Mr. Chair, I would like to really strongly support um, his confirmation to the rank of uh, Major General. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for Representative Sato. Now we recognize uh, Representative Munir Arbison. Yeah, Sorry. thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> this is not uh, an objection, but uh, a manifestation. I manifest my full support to the Chief of Staff, General Andres E. Centeno, Brigadier General Jimmy D. Larida, Lieutenant General Romeo Browner Jr., and all the officers who are subject for confirmation. Maraming salamat sa inyong servisyo, sakripisyo para sa ating bayan. Congratulations sa lahat. Maraming salamat, Chairman. Maraming salamat po, Representative uh, Munir Arbison. Any other member who wish to manifest or have a question to our appointees? There being none, Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, I move that the committee recommends the plenary for the commission to confirm the ad interim appointments of 17 general officers of the armed forces of the Philippines. I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there any objection? I said, I said, there is none. Motion. And duly seconded. Motion is hereby approved. Mr. Chair, there being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Okay. okay. On motion on acting majority floor leader, duly seconded. There being no objection, the meeting is hereby adjourned. Congratulations, Paul.
plenary session of the Commission on Appointments in the third regular session of the 18th Congress mm -hmm. is hereby called to order. Let us all pause for a minute of silent prayer. Thank you. Please remain standing for the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Secretary, please call the roll. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The honorable members of the Commission on Appointments, Advincula. Present. Almario. Alvarez Jr. Arbison. Present. Cagas, Chepeco Jr. Present. De La Rosa. Brilon. Present. Ferrer de Fort. Heron. Go. Present. Lapson, Noel, Pancho, present, Pangilinan, present, Pimentel the third, present, Po, present, Ramirez Sato, Present. Recto. Present. Revilla Jr. Present. Villanueva. Present. Villar. Present. Zamora. Subiri. Present. The chairperson is present. With two members physically present and 20 online for a total of 22, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, I move to dispense with the reading of the journal of the plenary session held on December 15, 2021 and consider the same as approved. Any objection? Chair, here's done. The journal is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices on the nomination of Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana as Commissioner, Commission on Audit for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, Vice Jose A. Fabia. I so move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, the consideration of the recommendation of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices is in order. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, 
The Commission received a letter yesterday dated January 24, 2022, from Mr. Lipana, addressed to the chairperson of the Commission, requesting that he be allowed to attend online during the consideration of his nomination in the plenary for the reason that he contracted COVID-19 and is required to undergo isolation pursuant to the IATF and DOH guidelines. Members of this commission have been provided a copy of the said letter request. On that note, Mr. Chair, I move that the letter dated January 24, 2022 of Mr. Mario Gilipana requesting that he allowed to appear online today before this August body be approved. I so move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. Mr. Chair, I move that the chairperson of the Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices, Senator Cynthia A. Villar, be recognized. Senator Cynthia Villar is recognized. Mr. Chairman and esteemed colleagues in the Commission on Appointments, good afternoon. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of your Committee on Constitutional Commissions and Offices of the Commission on Appointment, it is my honor and privilege to submit to this August body for its concern the nomination of Mar Mario Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana as Commissioner of the Commission on Audit for Ex term expiring in February 2, 2027, Vice Jose A. Fabia. It has been said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Our nominee took it one step further and reinforced the beauty of his dreams with hard work, determination, and faith. Our nominee has lived by the motto not to, that to accomplish great things, one must not only dream but act, not only plan but also believe. Mario Gonzalez Lipana hails from the province of Pulacan, the cradle of the nation noble heroes, born and raised in the municipality of San Ildeponso to Mr. and Mrs. Simplicio and Asuncion Lipana. Commissioner Lipana is the ninth of 11 children. Coming from a big family, the young Mario dreamt of accomplishing great things in life. As a young boy living on a farm, his parents taught him to do manual labor at the farm. Together with his siblings, young Mario always helped his parents in tilling the land and in planting crops. At the farm and even at a young age, he already showed great potential in numbers, such that he was always given the assignment of calculating how much fertilizer to use in proportion to the areas being cultivated as well as calculating the yield on the farm. Notwithstanding his farm duties, he would always find adequate time to focus on his studies and indulge in his favorite subject, mathematics. In school, he was diligent, studious, and focused on achieving the bright future he wanted to carve out for himself and his family. Believing that education is the key to his dream, Mr. Lipana persevered in his studies and soon enough he earned his degree, Bachelor of Commerce, major in accounting in 1982 from Baliwag University. That same year, Mr. Lipana hurdled the board examination and became a certified public accountant. Upon passing the board exam, he started working at the Commission on Audit in November 1983 as COA Auditing Examiner 3. Rising from the ranks, he became a director of the Office of the Chairperson of the Commission on Audit in 2016. In April of 2017, he was designated as the Regional Director of COA Regional Office Number 4A, or the Calabar Zone Region. He supervised the conduct of independent audit, examination, and settlement of accounts pertaining to government offices, agencies, and instrumentalities within the region. He also is per head in the implementation of COAS policies, plans, and program, even down to the most remote barangay in the region. Mr. Lipana led a compliment accomplishment of COAS program to build provincial satellite auditing offices in every province of the Philippines. He supervised the completion of provincial satellite buildings in the province of Quezon, Laguna, Batangas, and Rizal. 
He was also in the front line in the construction of the COA International Training Center in Tagaytay City. Concurrently, he is the head of the Intelligence and Confidential Audit Office, serving as its director where he supervises the audit of liquidation relative to the confidential expenses of the LGUs, national government agencies, and government-owned and controlled corporation. A skilled accountant is all that is necessary to maintain balance between assets and liabilities. However, in auditing government dealings towards achieving a good and clean government, no less than a man of competence and integrity is essential. Mario Lipana is a perfect fit for the job of a commissioner of the constitutional body, the Commission on Audit. He certainly has ample relevant experience given that his whole professional career has been spent in COA. But while he rose from the rank, he is not just another faceless bureaucrat. He is a model public servant who has given through the years that he is an indispensable asset of the Commission on Audit and the government. Judging by his work and accomplishment, he has likewise proven that he is committed to account for every single centavo of the nation's coffers, to hold every public officer irresponsible for the utilization of public funds, and to contribute to nation building by promoting responsible public spending. From what I have gathered, there are no indications that we'll ever depart from this commitment. It is in this light, Mr. Chair, my fellow members of the Commission, that I move with great honor and privilege for the confirmation of the nomination of Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana as the Commissioner of the Commission on Audit for a term expiring on February 2, 2027, by Jose A. Pabia. I so move, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman. So the, yes. Mr. Chairman, may I be given the uh, honor to second the motion? And uh, the... Senator Villanueva, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mr. President, uh, distinguished colleagues, members of the uh, commission. Good morning. It is my honor and uh, privilege to support the nomination and confirmation of Mario Gonzalez Lipana, a fellow Bulakeño, to the position of commissioner of the Commission on Audit. As earlier mentioned by our distinguished sponsor, I will no longer uh, repeat uh, the credentials of our uh, good kababayan. Let me just put on record, Mr. President, that Commissioner Lipana uh, truly uh, deserves uh, his nomination to one of the uh, highest uh, positions in the Commission. I am proud, and I'm sure Congressman Pancho shares the same thing. We are proud as Bulakenos. Uh, that another fellow Bulakenyo is excelling in his chosen field. May God uh, bless him in his uh, future uh, endeavors. Thank you again, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Thank President. You. Mr. President. Uh, Senator, uh, Senator Sabiri. Yes. May I also uh, uh, move for the, uh, or second the motion rather, the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Commissioner Mario Gonzalez Lipan of the Commission on Audit. Uh, Mr. President, if I may. Uh, Mr. President, nothing brings me greater joy than seeing competent, dedicated, and deserving officials rise from the ranks of government. And it gives our employees and officials something to look hard and forward to, and likewise provides them with a moral booster that they sometimes need. We have before us today Commissioner Lipana, who has been with the Commission on Audit for 38 years. And in his 38 years with the Commission on Audit, Commissioner Lipan has remained simple and has maintained the excellent work ethic that has brought him this far in his career. Aside from his extensive knowledge in the field of auditing, he has always been a dependable and approachable official, readily helping us. Uh, and I remember this, during my first term in the Senate, he was with us as our auditor. And he was also the supervising auditor of the different national agencies, including, as I said earlier, the Senate, Office of the President, and the Comelec. We value his devotion of his work in government and with his vast experience. And I believe that there is no better candidate for the position of commissioner of the Commission on Audit than this gentleman here today. With the above mentioned points, Mr. President, 
It is with great honor that I'm seconding the motion for the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Commissioner Mario Gonzalez Lipana. Congratulations, sir. I so move, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Senator Subiri. Um, Majority Leader, any other seconding? Uh, Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider a recommendation on the Committee on National Defense on the ad interim appointments oh, wait, of wait, seven. Wait. We we have not approved. I was just asking if there is a uh, uh, no more, Mr. Seconding. Chair. All right. No more, Therefore, um, there, is, there is a motion, duly seconded, for the commission to give its consent to the nomination of Mr. Mario Gonzalez Lipana as commissioner, commissioner an audit for a term expiring on the second of February, 2027. Vice Jose Fabia. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Congratulations, uh, Commissioner Lipana. Congratulations. Uh, well, he comes well, well recommended. Uh, even the speaker, Bebot Alvarez, called me about Commissioner Lipana. All right, thank you. Uh, Majority Leader. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, may we now proceed to consider the recommendation of the Committee on National Defense on the ad interim appointments of 17 general officers of the armed forces of the Philippines. I so move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Chair, here's none. The consideration of the recommendation of the Committee on National Events is in order. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, the Commission received a letter yesterday dated January 25, 2022 from the Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff for Personnel J1 Major General Adriano S. Perez Jr. requesting for the waiver of the personal appearance of the following general officers in the Armed Forces of the Philippines and that they be allowed to attend online during the consideration of their ad interim appointments in the plenary for the reason that they are COVID-19 positive and are required to undergo isolation pursuant to IATF and DOH guidelines. Members of this commission have been provided a copy of the said letter request. The appointees requesting to appear online in today's sessions are as follows. Lieutenant General Connor Anthony D. Canla Sr., Brigadier General Aldwin I. Almase, Brigadier General Randolph G. Kabangbang, Brigadier General Jimmy D. Laria. On that note, Mr. Chair, I move that the letter of Major General Adriano S. Perez, Jr., dated January 25, 2022, be approved. I so move, Mr. Chair. Is there any objection? Chair, here's none. The motion is approved. You may proceed, Majority Leader. Mr. Chair, I move that the chairperson of the Committee on National Defense, Representative Luis John John A. Ferrer the Fourth, be recognized. Representative Luis John John Ferrer the Fourth is hereby recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the Commission appointments, this representation as chairman of the Committee on National Defense presided over a public hearing this morning to deliberate on the ad interim appointments of 17 generals of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Your committee, after deliberating on their qualifications and fitness during the public hearing, determined that they are all fit and qualified to be promoted to the ranks where they are appointed, and therefore ruled to recommend to the plenary for the permission to confirm their ad interim appointments. Mr. Chairman, it is, it is this representation's honor and privilege to recommend the confirmation of the ad interim appointment of Andres C. Centino, the 57th Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, to the rank of General. Our appointee is a product of the Philippine Military Academy's Maringal Class of 1988. With proven competence and skill, he went through various local and foreign trainings where he graduated at the top of his class. He also emerged as part of the top 10 of his class when he finished his command and general staff course at the AFP Command and General Staff College. In the course of his service, he rose from the ranks in the Army organizational hierarchy. 
and therein assumed significant positions. His dedication, bravery, and competence resulted in the many awards and medals he received. He was the commander of the 4th Infantry Division of the Philippine Army, which has been a judge of the Fightingest Division and the best Army unit for the year 2020. He is known as a seasoned combat officer and tactician and admired by his men and colleagues for his genuine concern for their rights and welfare. No wonder he was dubbed as the combat general when he was commanding general of the Philippine Army as he visited soldiers at the front lines in the most remote patrol bases in the field, providing for their needs and much needed support. With his skills and immense degree of knowledge, one can confidently say that with General Centino at the helm of the AFP, as an organizational that serves as the backbone of lasting peace and unity, is in good hands. A protector of our sovereignty, a patriot, and a selfless leader. Mr. Chairman, my dear distinguished colleagues, it is with great honor and privilege to move for the confirmation of the appointment of Andres C. Centino, a brother Mason, the 57th Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines to the rank of General. I so move, Mr. Mr. Chair. Is there any objection? Chair, here's none. The motion is hereby approved. Congratulations, Kuya. Romeo S. Bronner, Jr., to the rank of Lieutenant General. I so move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, motion is approved. Connor Anthony D. Canlas, Sr., the rank of Lieutenant General. So move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Ernesto C. Torres, Jr., the rank of Lieutenant General. So move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Roy M. Galido, the rank of Major General. So move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Andrew D. Castell Costello, the rank of Major General. So move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Alex S. Villera, the rank of Major General. So move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Eric E. Nicanor, the rank of Major General. So move, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. J.T. T. Bahet, the rank of Brigadier General. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Pedro C. Balisi, Jr., to the rank of Brigadier General. So moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Ray B. Alemania, to the rank of Brigadier General. So moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Alduin I. Almase, to the rank of Brigadier General. So moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Frederick M. Cutler, to the rank of Brigadier General, so moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Jimmy D. Larida, to the rank of Brigadier General, so moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Romeo T. Racaljo, to the rank of Brigadier General, so moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. Leandro V. Abileda the third, to the rank of Brigadier General, so moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. And Randolph G. Kabangbang, to the rank of Brigadier General, so moved, Mr. Chair. Any objection? Hearing none, approved. That's all, Mr. Chair. Salamat po. Thank you, Representative uh, Ferrer. Majority Leader. Mr. Chair. There being no other matters to discuss, I move to adjourn. Any objection? Chair, here's none. The session is hereby adjourned.